All of you, Excellencies, Ministers, Ambassadors, Members of Parliament and Friends of Aspen are here tonight to celebrate and commemorate a very special event, the 40th birthday of Aspen, Germany, which was before named Aspen Berlin, and an institution which was not only well known but also very influential in this city. An institution which has been an intellectual gift of our American friends to Berlin when it was divided, when it was most needed, and which today, 25 years after the fall of the wall, still embodies and carries all the values which are dear to our heart, freedom, and a value-based leadership. Partners in Leadership is the title of this evening celebrating 40 years of the Aspen Institute in Germany. Partnership and transatlantic leadership are both needed today and more than ever before. We can only meet the challenges we are facing if we work closer together. This holds particularly true for the United States and the European Union. With its manifold programs and activities, the Aspen Institute is filling the transatlantic partnership with life. Aspen has been promoting mutual dialogue based on respect, trust, and understanding for four decades now. In this sense, let me say thanks to the friends of the Aspen Institute, to all of you here, for your commitment to this transatlantic friendship. The founder of Aspen, the industrialist Walter Pepke, was German. In 1950, he and his wife, Elizabeth, had the idea of establishing a research center for transatlantic exchange, the Aspen Institute for Humanistic Studies. Apart from the transatlantic exchange, Aspen's uniqueness can be found in its value-based leadership programs. I'm proud that Germany has reconnected with this history and has been offering philosophical leadership seminars for three years. In today's world, we are losing our shared values. We need to return to philosophical and ethical principles. By providing platforms for exchange, Aspen takes responsibility. It offers forums for communication. In 2014, where the global power structure is in flux, this is more essential than ever. The Aspen Institute has been recognized internationally for its mission to foster leadership by providing a non-partisan venue to deal with the critical issues of the day. Aspen US, with our nine international partners, works to provide these forums for neutral convenings for leaders from government, industry, academia, media, and the not-for-profit world. They deal with the pressing issues of the day, from some of which you've heard about already this evening, from climate change to technology, to health, to the role of media, to whatever issue happens to challenge society. Our Aspen family in the US, Europe, Asia, and now Latin America with the new launch of Mexico, has created a powerful network of bringing people together in meaningful conversations across boundaries and across sectors and opinions to encourage cooperation, leadership, entrepreneurship, and growth. We are privileged to be here in Berlin today to celebrate Aspen's birthday, the 40th anniversary, with you all and all that Aspen has achieved over these years. It was, as was mentioned by Corinne, the first Aspen International. And it was conceived at a point in history when reason and understanding were in short supply. I think we can probably say some of that is true today. It has subsequently worked to make the world more peaceful and secure. Aspen Germany has served as a bridge between East and West through our bilateral talks, bilateral arms talks, through Germany's own uh, national reunification, and in, to, again today as a neutral facilitator in the dialogue on the Ukraine and other of the volatile global issues. We are now proceeding to the highlight 
of tonight's evening. It is the presentation of the Shepherd Stone Award. You have already a certain feeling about how much we owe as Espen Germany to this great humanist leader and founder of the Espen Institute. From the time that he arrived at Bahnhof Friedrichstraße in 1929, uh, really up, up until he died in 1990, he just f felt divided uh, between being a Berliner and being an American. But Aspen Berlin gave him an opportunity to bring together what had always been important to him. He was somebody who rejected groupings. And after all, during the Second World War and its aftermath and so forth, people were very prone to say, the Germans are this, the French are that, the Russians are something else. And my father would say, no, you can't do it that way. There are individuals, there are people to whom you can talk, there are people whom we have to bring together. I will not refrain myself to just recall a bright day on November 11th in 1989. That was immediately after the downfall of the Berlin Wall. And Shep had rushed back to this city. We met near the wasteland, which had been left of the Potsdamer Platz. Here in this locality, in this location, he had experienced so many exciting hours as a student in the pre-Nazi city. And here on the 17th of June in 1953, Russian tanks had brutally, flat, brutally flattened down the people's uprising in the eastern part of Berlin. Shep on that day and that instance could obviously not believe his eyes. History had finally confirmed himself and all those others who had never, never ceased to rely on the power of freedom and human rights to be forceful enough to finally overcome any kind of suppression. And then, of a sudden, he could not hold back his tears. This, my friends, this was his legacy, and it will prevail forever. Shepard Stone was a European-American, and an American-European as well. Thus, the foundation which carries his name has gracefully donated the design of the award which, we will, be, which will be given tonight to another champion of transatlantic relationships, Mr. Matthias Döpfner. Together with this foundation, I personally am deeply moved, deeply moved that the Aspen organization had decided to keep alive the memory of this great man by dedicating the award to the unforgettable name of Shepard Stone. Thank you. I'm told, Ed Saad, that you used to say that if the Aspen Institute didn't exist in Berlin, we would have to create one. Margaret, I never met your father although I have been an admirer of his life's work for many years. He and others, in fact, did create this indispensable institution, and he was the indispensable player in its creation. And no one looms over this spectacular 40th anniversary more than he. It is particularly poignant for me, and I'm sure for many, that you have evoked the words and the spirit of two great transatlanticists and friends of Tammy and mine in the ECHO Partners in Leadership, George H.W. Bush and Helmut Kohl. Now at the edge of its 40s, 
Aspen and we face troubling emerging dimensions of the East-West tensions of long ago. Matthias Dopfner ist ein Freund, eine talentierte Führungsperson, die sich mit Leidenschaft in der Zivilgesellschaft und für Kultur und Kunst engagiert. Und er ist einer meiner persönlichen Helden. The consensus heroes of our town hall deliberations figured out early on what they stood for. They held tightly to their deep inner convictions and they stuck it out, as they say on the altar, for better or for worse, and in good times and in bad. With great courage, clarity, and strength, Matthias has thickened the pillars which Axel Springer himself penned and upon which Axel Springer Age or SA is built. The Transatlantic Alliance, the steadfast support for the State of Israel, the further unification of not just Germany but of Europe, the embrace of the principles of the free social market economy. So Matthias, keep standing up to the digital leviathans demanding a fair fight. Keep calling out Vladimir Putin and the like and expose the chasm between their rhetoric and their actions. Keep defending with great passion Israel's right to peace and security, even when it is unpopular to do so. Keep promoting tirelessly the transatlantic bridge and America herself even when it is in vogue to question its relevance. And remember that we look up to you, so never stop being the tallest guy in the room. Thank you to the Aspen Institute for that wonderful award. It really means a lot to me. And I think the Aspen Institute is a great institution. It always has been, and I'm seriously convinced that it is entering a new phase uh, here in Berlin under the new leadership. Shepard Stone. I've never met Shepard Stone, but I was told um, not only tonight what a charismatic man he was. Uh, to, this morning I talked to Friede Springer, and she, um, she told me that uh, he was always in the morning walking around Schwanwerder, the little island where the Aspen Institute and Axel Springer's home used to be. And um, then in the end they had, a, uh, they had a coffee at Axel Springer's home, and Friede Springer said this morning with this kind of glimpse in her eyes, what a wonderful man. So he must have been really uh, impressive, um, and I'm glad and proud to be awarded with the Shepard Stone Award. Germany without America, Europe without America would be different. We not only owe the Americans the recovery after the Second World War and a second chance, so to speak, we not only owe them the airlift and with that the existence of Berlin as a German city and a German capital, we owe uh, Ronald Reagan and George Bush the German reunification. Without um, Reagan's commitment uh, and speech and without particularly Bush's uh, commitment to the process of the unification, we wouldn't be where we are today. And we owe the Americans the solidarity and activity in the fight against terror, against Islamist terror, and that is too often forgotten or taken for granted. But sometimes we also have to bring something to the party. And I was told that today one of the most interesting topics of your conference was the discussion about big data. I can only tell you that I think this is one of the very few examples where Europe may be ahead of America when it comes to the sensitivity about the usage and abusage about data, when it comes to the whole discussion about transparency and full transparency I think it has to be understood that the Americans have been influenced by the iconic trauma of 9-11, whereas the Europeans have, inf have been influenced by the iconic traumas of the Stasi and the GDR, and more importantly, by the trauma of the Nazis and the Holocaust. We cherish and applaud all the 
advantages of a digitization of our society that is based on data, but we have to have this discussion, and I take a bet today that in five years and seven years this will be a totally different discussion in the United States. I cannot imagine that a country and people that are, for me, and I think objectively, the lighthouse of freedom, a society that is based and founded on the idea of freedom and individualism, can accept in the long run that there is no privacy because everything is shared with everybody. And I think this principle that if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, is one of the worst and most terrible principles. That's a principle of a, uh, of a totalitarian system. I definitely think it is of strategic importance to stick together because we have common challenges. And we have to stick together in order to prevail with our ideas of freedom and democracy. It is very simple. The idea of the West, of the free West, of democracy, of freedom and human rights is simply the better case. In that spirit, we should be proud. We should simply acknowledge that we are the good guys. And in that spirit, we should stick together. We need a very strong transatlantic alliance. And that's why I'm so moved by this award. Thank you very much for this.